to St. Peter and All Saints Episcopal Church. I'm delighted to be worshiping with you this morning, as is Deacon Donna, who is off camera. Everything you need for this service, including the music, can be found in a PDF link, which is either in an email that came from the church or in the comments section of this YouTube video. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. to God in the highest and peace, whose people on earth, Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the most high, Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, and saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. A reading from Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptying himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling 
for it is God who is in work who is at work in you enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure the word of the Lord Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Advertisements for the presidential debate this Tuesday remind me of today's gospel passage. There will be crafty questions designed to get the person answering to commit to one side of an issue or the other. Jesus composed questions even more craftily than modern-day journalists. He asked the leaders of his nation, did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? Like some politicians, the chief priests and elders did not consider the truth. Rather, they considered which answer would have which consequence for them. Since they could not come out on top with either potential answer, they did not answer, saying, we do not know. They would not speak the truth. There could be no environment for truth speaking, and so Jesus would not, and perhaps could not, answer their question about the source of his authority. But then... He was the authority. Standing before them was the author of life. Talking with them was the word of God, truth itself. This was like Pilate's question to Jesus. What is truth? To Pilate, truth was a philosophical concept, something to toss back and forth. 
Jesus did not answer Pilate's question because truth was standing in front of Pilate. What was truth to say if Pilate could not see it? Have you noticed how often politicians begin to say something with the phrase, the truth is, truth claims are made in many forums beyond politics, advertising, for example, or even in churches. In fact, we make a lot of truth claims in church, especially those of us who preach. And the postmodern mind is quick to suspect an ulterior motive, a power grab, underneath every truth claim. So let's look at this. What is the church's ultimate truth claim? It is what preachers should be declaring and what all of us should be doing. It is the gospel truth, the good news of God, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. In some places, though, you sometimes hear the great lie that Jesus Christ came into the world to send good people to heaven and bad people to H-E double toothpicks. So if we look underneath the truth claims in church, we will find an ulterior motive, which is salvation for undeserving sinners. But under the great lie, we find a logical path that leads to power for some and manipulation for the rest, a truth claim that is of human origin. John's Gospel says, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This truth claim is from heaven, for in it is freedom and the path that leads to Jesus Christ, who is himself truth and salvation. Truth and salvation, then, are neither philosophical concepts nor something to be dispensed by clergy. They are combined in a person, our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't see anything there to debate, but rather someone to know. St. Paul addressed knowing Christ in our passage from his letter to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. After Moses struck the rock in the desert and water poured out, he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? In the midst of demonstrations, conflicts, quarrels, tests, debates, fiery rhetoric, unemployment, and the pandemic, most assuredly the Lord is among us. I'm going to remind myself of that fact every day through Election Day. The Lord is among us, all of us. Amen. Life free. 
the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, all of all that, that is, is seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people form three are found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer or on page 9 of your PDF service booklet. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Martin, our bishop, and for our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, our vestry, our parish staff, and especially St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Fayette. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Donald, our president, our elected representatives, and the courts. That there may be justice and peace on the earth, Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially those affected by the coronavirus. Catherine Alberg, David and Lisa Haynes, Michael Kelly, Henry Malloy, Bryce Rankin, and also Anna, Jan Bateman, the Reverend Barbara Beam, Jeff Brockhaus, Bud Brown, Sherry Candillo, Craig Cartwright, Kathleen Clark, Lisa Cole, Harold Czar, Dick Davey, Doug Dyer, Wayne Forrest, Alex and Susan Green, Claire Gustafson, the Reverend Kathy Hall, Felix Harden, Betty Lockhart Hayes, Greg and Janet Helma, Jim, Ed and Blair Joyner Jr., Charles and Karen Joyner, John Loss, Ray Mason, Michael and Sheila Mayberry, Heather Maynard, Phil Maynard, Jeannie McDowell, Kathy Morris, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bud Myers, Gary Oda, Rosemary Overby, Sandy Reagan, Rick, Betty Ritchie, Rob, Tom and Carly Roberton, Rick Sisko, Tom Ryan, Gary Smith, Dick and Lana Strong, John Thompson, Trish Thompson, Dennis and Mary Warning, Don and Donna White. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For those serving in the military, especially Loyal Otterson, Alex Battle, Tanner Bosch, Carl and Julie Bradley, Matthew Carmichael, Gage Dietz, James Femmeler, Tom Gildea, Sean Harvey, Ryan Kelly, Aaron Lindy, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Kylie Moore, Lucy Nix, Sean Perrone, Samantha Reed, Nolan Roberson III, Dan Sanford, Hunter Soule, Melanie Yates, and those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, Abby Zarr, Deborah Fultz, Addie George, Heather Hancock, Courtney Ishihama, John Ben Hafton. Almighty Father, whose blessed Son before his passion prayed for his disciples that they might be one as you and he are one, grant that your church, being bound together in love and obedience to you, may be united in one body by the one Spirit, that the world may believe in him whom you have sent, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who created us in your own image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom, help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations, to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. These are the offerings and oblations uh, of our life and labor. Let us present them to the Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For announcements, I uh, would like to just mention a couple of things. One, uh, we have services in person every Sunday at 10 a.m. You'll need a mask, and we do offer communion, though this online service is the one where you find hymns. We don't get to sing in church. Another one is watch for announcements about the finishing of the kitchen renovation. Uh, it is very, very near com nearly complete, um, and we're going to have a big reveal party and also a dedication of a plaque recognizing the Hunt family uh, who gave the money in a bequest uh, for this to take place. And then this fall, let's look forward to doing some cooking together and dining together 
in a safe way, probably outside on pretty fall evenings. <laughs>